How a company called Good Trust can help you plan for the future. Welcome back to Textonation. Joining us from Good Trust are co founders Ricard Stiber and Daniel Seberg. Hi, Ricard. Hey, Fred. Thank you so much for having us today. Great to be here. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Fred. Great to chat with you. Now, let's give the audience a little background to begin with. Uh, you both have terrific technology backgrounds, which include Google and more. Let's start with you, Ricard. Uh, give us the, the overview of your background and how this company came to be. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, my name is Ricard Steiber. I'm, the, I'm the, your usual Swedish tech guy who uh, uh, got a job with Google in the mid-2007. And uh, I've been launching a lot of products around the world, everything from uh, Google Earth to Android to YouTube to search, et cetera. And I came over to the US in 2009. I also been working with esports, streaming music, streaming video, virtual reality, self-driving cars. Uh, so I had a tech career, uh, which was awesome. And then in 2020, my father died and uh, everything kind of stopped. And I was kind of sucked into what happens to your digital stuff when you die. And as it turns out, no one has any idea. So I found out that People, uh, you know, on Facebook today, there's 30 million dead people on Facebook uh, sending awkward birthday reminders. Uh, I found out that they're still on LinkedIn sending work anniversaries. There is uh, billions of dollars being lost on online accounts because no one finds the accounts. So uh, I started Good Trust to essentially fix this global problem. And as we got into this, we also discovered that uh, people in America don't have a will. Two thirds of Americans don't have a will, especially if you're not super rich, uh, you don't have estate planning in shape. So we started Good Trust to protect what really matters for people, protect their family, their assets, their legacy. How will they be remembered after they pass away? So Good Trust is a you kind of one stop shop to create your will, make sure that people find all of your assets and also that uh, your memory and legacy uh, remains there uh, today, but also after you pass away. So that's my kind of quick intro uh, over to you, Daniel. Yeah, no, thank you, Rickard. I would say, Fred, so Rickard and I maybe have had a, uh, a similar uh, journey in some ways over the last uh, 10, 11 years or so. We both uh, worked at Google. We overlapped there. Uh, we've both been in entrepreneurship for a little while. Uh, we have similar looking last names even. Uh, we ended up co-writing a book together um, called uh, Digital Legacy, Take Control of Your Online Afterlife. Um, as we were thinking about what Good Trust might look like. And prior to that, I spent about a dozen years in the media, in journalism, focused on science and technology, and worked at CNN and CBS and ABC, and you know, came to deeply appreciate what it means to be remembered, to preserve our stories and memories. Um, my uh, maternal grandmother died of Alzheimer's complications, and I was a teenager when that happened, so I think it was a, a, um, a pivotal moment in my life to see what the value of that is to both the individual and the family members and friends around that person. So, yeah, and, and you know, we've expanded Good Trust a lot, as Rickard mentioned, over the last couple of few years and thinking about everything that pertains to protecting what matters. And so that could be your estate planning, that could be your online security, and it could be your digital stories and memories. So we have this holistic way of at looking of looking at it all. Well, there have been products, as you both well know, uh, on, on the market before for doing wills and trusts, things like that, uh, from a couple of major companies. Tell us how you're different. And you are taking this whole concept well beyond just producing a document here. Uh, estate planning is, you know, really being disrupted by online technology. In the old days, we had to call our lawyers, we had to sit down with them, it took weeks, uh, and then eventually you had a paper document, and then you thought you were done, uh, and you didn't really update uh, the will. Today, it is all done online, on your phone, it takes 15 minutes, it's click, 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 it's more like doing TurboTax, uh, uh, you know, once per year to kind of stay updated, because your current will, if you have a paper will, probably doesn't mention all of those online accounts that you have, your bank accounts. Uh, it probably doesn't contain access to your photos with iCloud or uh, Google Photos. So which means that 
What we do differently is that we make it so much more accessible. It's not just your will. It is your uh, durable power of attorney. It is your living will. It's your funeral directive, your pet directive. It's your trust if you want it. So it's all of those things that you really want. Very easily updated on your phone, on your, on your desktop. But also you have what we call a digital vault where you can essentially list all of the important things that you want your family to find either today to get organized. So me and my wife, for example, we share kids uh, vaccination cards, we share their passports, insurance and things like that so that everyone in the family knows where you find all of these dogs. Super easy. You take your phone, you take a photo of your passport or insurance card and you upload it and then everyone in the family can see it. But you can also decide that certain things, maybe my Facebook account, my password to my computer, or maybe that Coinbase Ethereum, not that Ethereum is worth anything in these days, but uh, if it was, that those accounts, maybe I don't want my wife to have them right now. But if something happens to me, I want her to find them. So we have these settings where certain assets can be shared either today or only if you pass away. So you have the will, which uh, secures the transfer of assets, but then you have the vault, which kind of lists all of your assets. And then we also found out, and this is this is Daniel's point, so I asked him to talk about it, is that it's not just about your, your physical or your monetary assets. Sometimes it's more about your emotional and your memories and stories. So maybe you can talk about that, Daniel. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Rickard. So, I, and you know, we live our lives uh, in the digital world uh, these days. Uh, we all spend an average of about uh, six to seven hours uh, online, depending on our uh, job or our uh, family commitments and, and all of that. And we're creating, um, we're, the average person takes about 20 photos per day on their smartphone. And all of that is adding up over time. And so how do we capture those memories and stories in a way that feels meaningful for people? So in addition to everything that Ricard described with estate planning and the idea of transferring assets and ensuring people are aware of your digital life. There's also the sort of the emotional connection to all of those stories and memories and how do you capture that and preserve that? So we have created uh, a number of different ways uh, to do that. Um, we refer to the uh, all of them in aggregate as something called life stories. And so this is where you can take a photo, for example, one of those many photos that we're all capturing every day and add a, a layer of personalization to it, customization, fun. Uh, you can do a live portrait, which is kind of what we think of as a bit of a Harry Potter kind of a spin on a, on a memory. So for example, let's pretend, I mean, in this case, if uh, you know we're looking at a photo of Marilyn Monroe here, but if you had a, an older photo of your grandparents or someone like that, you could animate them in a way that really brings them back to life for a future generation. Because as we know, of course, you know, photos from this era, many of them were black and white. They were a bit static by comparison to what we have today. So to add that kind of interactivity and engagement can be really meaningful for people. Uh, and then we have an, uh, something that also falls into the fun category, I would say, with singing portraits. Um, you can add a, a song here. Maybe it's something that somebody knew. Uh, maybe it's just to um, create this kind of personalization to it. You can do it around a holiday. Um, and then any of those two options, you can take and send it as a future message uh, to somebody, kind of like a, a, a time capsule. So, you know, we, we all maybe kind of grew up with this idea of preserving our life at a certain point and then looking at it later. Um, and, and a future message has a similar concept, you decide when somebody receives this message in the future, it could even be a message to yourself. Um, you could try to, you know, send an inspirational message to yourself and receive it a year from now. You could, you could decide that it's after you pass away and that people receive uh, a notification from you. It's, you know, I have two daughters and if I were to send them something that was triggered only after I passed away, telling them I love them, that I, you know, you know always thought about them, maybe it's on their birthday or whatever it is. Um, there's really an, a, a, you know, again, an emotional uh, connection here. And then the, um, the next phase for us is something that we're launching very soon. And uh, Rickard, I don't know if you wanted to, to maybe show that and, and get into that, but it's kind of the evolution of this live portraits is one and then singing portraits. And then we're getting into something called story portraits. So what I talked about estate planning, 
it's essentially a simple place where you can create all of those documents that you know uh, we all should have in place but we don't and it's a it's an online flow uh, and essentially click click you can get it done and then when it comes to the uh, vault for example i'll just show you i'll just show you mine so what you can do is that here you can see that I put, you know, everything from my social media accounts to my uh, phone account to PayPal to LinkedIn to Citibank to Robinhood. Uh, but it could be also all of your documents. It could be access to your devices. And, and the system, the way it works is that uh, if you have a friend, so for example, my, my brother here, Bjorn, you can see that here are all the different accounts that I shared with him. And then you have this function where you could share it either now or only after death. So that makes it uh, easy to, to get organized. So, so the idea here is that uh, being that one place where you can protect what matters, if it is the more uh, rational sort of monetary assets or if it's the more emotional legacy, and then also providing the estate plan that you know, safeguards the transfer of those, of those assets. Well, it sounds wonderfully useful, but, uh, you know, the first question a lot of people will have about something like that is, or the first two questions, one is, why should I trust you with all of that? And the second is, uh, uh, what about security? And, and, you know, and the possibility, what, and what if your company is not around when I want all of these things to be available? Yeah, no, I think security is, is the most most important thing. So what what we do is the security is essentially four cornerstones. One is uh, when you are in the browser, you are working in an encrypted session. You uh, besides password, you use two factor authentication. So very similar to how you access information from your your bank or your healthcare provider. So it's a it's a very similar, and then. When you send information to our servers, uh, we use SSL, which is which basically means that the information is encrypted, so no one can intercept it on on its way to us. And we are a, a Microsoft for startups company, so we get ex special access to Microsoft Azure and some of their their server technology. So it's the 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 most advanced enterprise grade server technology. So. If someone was going to try to hack uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, everything will be encrypted on their servers as well. And then finally. Uh, and no one in good trust can access your information you can own, they can only access customer service information so if you need help with you know resetting your password or or something like that so we have a very holistic way of looking at security and you know uh, we work very closely with organizations such as ARP uh, with leading insurance companies we work with banks we also try to do technology for good. So if you are a US veteran, for example, we give uh, our service at no cost to veterans because we want to uh, service those who service, served us, so to speak. So uh, we are a well-funded uh, Silicon Valley startup uh, with reputable investors such as uh, Kosla Ventures. Uh, so I think we have as much as anyone can have uh, in order to provide the security and the longevity of the function. So that's a very solid background. So tell us then, this new, this new feature that's going to be coming soon. So we talked about live portraits and singing portraits and future messages. And something we've been thinking about for quite a while is how could we attach a, an audio memory or story to a photo? Uh, especially since, you know, even with video on our smartphones, so many of us still take photos and of course, you know, if you look back 10, 20, 30 years ago, uh, most people were not using video as a way to capture their memories. And it can still be a little unwieldy to share or to download or to pass on to someone. So how could we do that? So what we have uh, to coming soon uh, is the ability for people to upload a photo um, and then choose to either add an audio recording or to type in um, whatever story they wanted to associate with that photo. And then a person in that photo will speak or share that story uh, with whoever is looking at it. Hello there. Joe Barker here and you are looking at the most beautiful family in the world. This photo was taken in August, 1949 and we were at the Santa Cruz boardwalk. Sun, seagulls, corn dogs, and scary roller coasters. It sounds a little science fiction. Um, we'd like to think it's more science than fiction, 
So I get this, um, and it, it looks terrific, great features, um, can have a lot of fun with it, even after long after you're gone, I suppose. But how do you answer people who might say, boy, this is creepy, uh, you know, and uh, I, I don't know about this? I So I think that will be um, both inevitable and um perpetual. <laughs> I don't know that we'll, uh, you know, quite ever see a day where we're all in agreement of how this technology feels. I do think that it does matter whether it's your own family or somebody else's. So your point of view, in other words, if it's your memories and it's your, somebody, you know, and you can sort of bring them to life in this way by adding a voice, even if it's synthetic in the beginning, but adding a memory, bring them to life, sharing that in a limited way. So with other family members or friends, then that starts to feel meaningful and like something that really matters to you and probably a little less creepy if it feels like it's done right. If it's somebody else's family or image or memory or whatever it is, it might have more of that kind of creepy feel to it because you don't know that person and it's a little different. It doesn't have that kind of resonance uh, that it might have if it's your own family. Uh, so I think a lot of it does, per, you know, pertain to your perspective. Um, but certainly this technology is also just so new. And for a lot of people, it's just adjusting to what this is, how this fits into their life. Where does this go from here? You know, could you have a conversation at some point with these images and not just view it? You know, this is really just the beginning of, of where we're headed. So I think it's a little bit of just kind of, you know, see, see where it goes from here to some degree. Terrific. Now, tell us about uh, pricing and uh, where people can go to, to give this a try. Yeah. So if you want to try uh, animating your photo, uh, you can go to uh, mygoodtrust.com. Uh, you can you can try it for free at first. And if you like it, you can do uh, all kinds of custom animations. Currently, it's uh, $4.99 per month. Um, if you want to create your will, uh, you can go to uh, mygoodtrust.com as well. You can start creating your will at no cost. And once you know you agree with your partner, you want to legalize the documents, uh, it's essentially $8 per, per month. And you can do unlimited updates. You have unlimited access to the vault and, uh, and things like that. So it's it's super easy to get started and and give it a try. Super affordable. We'd really you know we're really making an effort to make it accessible to to everyone. Uh, and uh, when it comes to to the news of the uh, the story report that we're launching, I would also say that uh, you know both me and Daniel has this vision that this is just the beginning. We started with animating portraits like in Harry Potter. Uh, you make them uh, sing, now you can make them talk. But I think we're starting to get so used to talking to our phones and, uh, you know, hello Siri and hello Google. And uh, and I think that having that conversation, not just with uh, Google and, and Apple, you will have that with your, uh, your, you know, your deceased grandparents, for example, and the technology to access information that they had uh, about where they were. Because today our phones log everything where we are all of our photos are geotagged and time tagged, uh, and you know they access to all of our documents. So artificial intelligence could very easily make it available. So if I asked Granddad, uh, "Did you ever go to Mexico?" Uh, you know the AI would easily answer, say, "Yes, I love Mexico. I've been there like fifty times." Uh, do you want us to show? Do you want me to show you some photos when we were there together? You know, ten years ago. And you can say yes, and granddad can bring up the photos and you can share those memories. Very easy technology. It's already here. Uh, we just need to build it. Terrific. So once again, the website for all of this? The website is mygoodtrustinoneword.com, mygoodtrust.com. Terrific. Well, Ricard and Daniel, thank you so much for spending time with us. And we certainly look forward to what's there now and what's to come. Thank you, Fred. Thanks, Fred.